1914, L Battery, Royal Horse Artillery, rode into battle in support of 1st Cavalry Brigade as part of the British Expeditionary Force of the First World War. The greatest exploit in all its history was to occur during the famous Retreat from Mons, when the battery took part in an action now referred to as the Affair at Neri, which was believed by many to be the turning point of that part of the First World War. During the action at the village of Neri, L Battery suffered heavy losses but fought bravely until the last gun had expended all of its ammunition and held the German 4th Cavalry Division at bay. Three Victoria Crosses were awarded to members of the battery for the action, and the battery was awarded the battle title, Neri. This is the account of that action. On the evening of the 31st of August, 1914, the 1st Cavalry Brigade and L Battery bivouacked in the village of Neri. The horses were mostly picketed in enclosures inside the village, and those of L Battery, as usual, tied to long ropes stretched between the parked guns and ammunition wagons. As we look at the map, we can see that the brigade was arranged with A and B squadrons of the 5th Dragoon Guards in the north, and C squadron in the centre of the village. Next to C squadron were the 11th Hussars in the southern edge of the village, and A B and C squadrons of the 2nd Dragoon Guards orientated to the west. In a field to the south of the village was L Battery, made up of six 13-pound field guns and their attendant limbers, horses and crews. Men and horses, tired from the long marches during the retreat from Mons, slept. It had been intended to continue the retreat at 04.30 the next day but a dense fog had formed during the night, so the move was postponed and units told to be ready at 05.30. The interval was used to water and feed the horses in rotation. There was a deep ravine to the east of the village and beyond, a plateau which overlooked the village. Unknown to the British, the German 4th Cavalry Division had spent the night just beyond this plateau, about two miles from Neri, and were arranged thus. In the north, the 3rd German Cavalry Brigade, consisting of the 9th Uhlans and 3rd Cuirassiers, were the first German troops to be seen. In the east, the 15th and 16th Hussars of the 18th German Cavalry Brigade were being supported by the 17th and 18th Dragoons, who, in turn, were being supported by a battery of German machine guns and 18 guns of the 3rd Regiment of the German Field Artillery. German reconnaissance patrols discovered the British at first light and an immediate German attack from both flanks was ordered, and this was to be supported by 12 guns firing from the plateau. Just before the fog suddenly lifted, a British patrol discovered the Germans and rushed to raise the alarm. However, they were too late, and just as a startled subaltern was making his report, the whole village was swept by the fire of the German guns. The effect was devastating. Men and horses, mostly in the open, and closely packed together, were shot down in swathes while the wounded horses broke loose and stampeded. The scene in L battery lines was even more terrible. Being closest to the enemy on the east side of the village, the battery received the full weight of fire from the 12 guns at a range of just 800 yards. As the frightened horses plunged in their harnesses, the poles of the limbers embedded themselves in the ground and the horses were pinioned as they were blown to pieces by enemy fire. The battery commander had been knocked unconscious by one of the first shells in the action and played no further part in the battle. The battery captain, Captain Edward Bradbury and the subalterns were standing in a corner of the field when the action began and they saw the battery being shot to pieces in front of their eyes. Shouting for volunteers, Bradbury raced for the guns, followed by the subalterns, Sergeant David Nelson and some of the men and between them, they managed to unlimber three of the guns. Bradbury commanded one, Lieutenant Gifford another, and the third gun was commanded by Lieutenants Campbell and Monday. The ammunition had to be brought through constant fire from 20 yards away, and casualties began to mount. First, Lieutenant Campbell's gun had a direct hit before firing a round, and then Lieutenant Gifford's gun, after only a few rounds, was hit with severe casualties and put out of action. Bradbury's gun remained in action, reinforced by some of the survivors 
and later, Battery Sergeant Major George Durrell, who had returned from watering the horses. The remaining gun bore a charmed life, and despite a constant flow of casualties, Bradbury kept it in action against three hostile batteries at under a thousand yards away. As the numbers dwindled, Bradbury was mortally wounded bringing ammunition to the gun, leaving a detachment of just the Battery Sergeant Major Durrell and Sergeant Nelson. As the available ammunition was expended, the gun fell silent at last. This action allowed the 1st Cavalry Brigade to launch a counter-attack, forcing the Germans to retreat in disorder. Hailed by many as a turning point in the war against the Kaiser, the action at Neri was the first time the Allies had won the field of battle. It halted the German advance, and after this action, the Allied armies never again conducted a significant withdrawal for the rest of the war. The affair at Neri brought honour and recognition to the battery, as Bradbury, Durrell and Nelson were awarded the Victoria Cross, and Gunnar Derbyshire and Driver Osborne awarded the Military Medal, and the title of Neary was bestowed upon the battery, making it L. Neary Battery Royal Horse Artillery. Captain Edward Bradbury BC is buried in the village communal cemetery in Neary, in a plot close to the other fallen soldiers of the battery. Sergeant David Nelson BC, who later achieved the rank of Major, was killed in action at Lille, France, on 8th of April 1918. And Battery Sergeant Major George Durrell BC survived the Great War, stayed in the army to the rank of Colonel, and died of old age in the UK in 1971. The First World War changed the world and warfare forever, and it was on the 1st of September 1914 that this change began. The German advance was halted, Paris was saved, and the war turned from one of manoeuvre to one of attrition. The origins of our perceptions of war and the way we fight today, shaped by the war to end all wars, can be traced back to one misty morning in September 1914.